to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. We welcome you today to our study of the inspiration of Scripture. Today we're specifically talking about the Holy Spirit's role in inspiring the Word of God in the first century that we now have as the Bible. And so we're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. We want to encourage you to locate your Bible and have it ready as we're going to look to the Word of God in everything we say and do in our study today. Today's lesson is being brought to you by individual members and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly on Sunday or Wednesday. They'd love to have you for any of their worship services. And I can assure you, you will find people there who love God, who love others, and who are ultimately concerned about men and women going to heaven. If you'd like to know more about the church, you've got a question about worship, anything they do there, or the plan of salvation, they'd be happy to sit down and talk to you about the Word of God. And friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, we also want to help you in your journey to know God's Word better. If you've got a question or you'd like to know more about the Scriptures, you can call us or write to us, email us at the information given. We'll be happy to discuss that with you. Also, you can visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can find all of our material archive. We've got written material, questions and answers, all of our transcripts of our lessons, plus we've got our audio lessons and our video lessons archived online. If you'd like to have a copy of that, you can go to our uh, free digital download center, free media download there page, and uh, you can get a download or we'll send you a CD or a DVD free of charge as well. But most importantly, my friend, we want you to know that we, the concern and the emphasis of the gospel of Christ's work is to help men and women know the Word of God better so that ultimately we can spend eternity in heaven together. And so we hope and encourage you today, let's look to the Word of God in everything that we say and do. Let's now turn our attention to the idea of the Holy Spirit's role in inspiration. We've been thinking about for our last couple of lessons the inspiration of the Scripture, and now pivotal to that is the role the Holy Spirit played in getting the Word of God to us through men in the first century to us today. And so how did that work? Well, let's open to the premier passage, a couple of premier passages that help us to understand that. Would you open your New Testament with me to 2 Peter chapter 1? When we think about the Holy Spirit's role in the inspiration of Scripture, we have to look at what Peter says about that in 2 Peter chapter 1. And I want to encourage you to look, if you would, in verses 20 and 21. The Bible says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of men, now notice this, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. When you think about this idea, prophecy didn't come by human origin private interpretation, meaning that men didn't sit down and think about it and put it in their own. No. Holy men of God spoke, listen to this, as they were guided or moved by the Holy Spirit. The word here for moved in this verse literally means to uh, born along or carried along 
The idea is that the Holy Spirit was the driving or the moving force in the inspiration of Scripture. Interestingly enough, the Greek word used in 2 Peter 1.21 is the same word found in Acts chapter 27, verses 15 through 17, and Paul says the ship was moved, borne along, carried along by the winds. When you think about that idea, it helps us to see how inspiration occurred. Did God use a human vessel, human individual men to write the message of the New Testament. There's no doubt that he did. But what was the moving force that guided them through that process? Friend, it was the Holy Spirit. Just as in Acts 27, the experienced sailors couldn't navigate the ship because the wind was so strong, the ship was being driven by, directed, and carried about by the wind. Well, friend, that same idea. The Holy Spirit was the driving, directing, and carrying force of the human authors giving us the Bible as God wished. The Word is indeed a strong one, and it indicates the Holy Spirit's complete guidance or superintendence over the human authors. Yes, just as the sailors were active on the ship, though the wind, not the sailors, controlled that ship, so the human authors were active, meaning they put their pen in, their, in the ink and they put it to parchment and they, they wrote. It was the Holy Spirit who directed that idea. And the same is true in what we have as the Bible today. You see, the Holy Spirit's role is clearly seen in Jesus' promise to His disciples. I want you to see these verses. There are three verses that I want you to look at where Jesus promises His disciples that the Holy Spirit's role in getting the Word of God to them would be very clear and very active. Look in John 14. Three verses back to back. Look in John chapter 14, verse number 26. Notice what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit's role here. Jesus says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Now flip over to John 15, verse number 26. Jesus said, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Now look at this one in John 16, verse number 13. Jesus said this, However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, and He will tell you things to come. Friend, all three of those verses, John 14, 26, John 15, 26, and John 16, 13 clearly show that the Holy Spirit was the guiding active force in teaching new truth, reminding them of what Jesus said, and giving us, giving them by which we got as well, everything we need in the Word of God today. But you know, when you think about the role of the Holy Spirit, you can also see that as being very active and here's what we want to show. This idea of the Holy Spirit being the guiding force, the Spirit of God is what got us the Bible, it's throughout the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, God oversaw that process with the Holy Spirit. And so think about it for just a moment as it relates to the Old Testament and inspiration. The Old Testament recognized and clearly taught that it was the Holy Spirit of God who spoke through the original writers and prophets of the Old Testament. Now, how do we know that's true? Take your Old Testament and look with me at this amazing verse. You don't want to miss this. Look in 2 Samuel 23. Look in verses 2 and 3 with me. David said, The Spirit, watch this now, The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me. Watch this. His word was on my tongue. The God of Israel said, 
the rock of Israel spoke to me. He who rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of fear of God. And so when, when David told us about getting the word of God to us, he said, God spoke through me. That means that he was just the human agent that God used, the Holy Spirit of God used to get his message to us. And even more clearly, his word was on my tongue. When David opened his mouth and spoke, whose word came? God's. God's word came out. Indeed, as you look to the Old Testament, there are many Old Testament passages that are quoted later in the New Testament that, that we know a, a prophet or an individual was the human agent, and yet it, the, the New Testament actually will say the Holy Spirit is indeed the author of that. Even though God used a man or a prophet to, to bring that message, the New Testament will come in and say it was the Holy Spirit who was the actual author of that. And so here's what I want us to do. And just for a few minutes, I want you to see some of these passages. I want you to notice the following passages where an Old Testament writer actually wrote that and said something, and later in the New Testament, it is attributed to God or the Holy Spirit actually writing or saying something. And so think about these with me. Psalm 95 verse 7. In a great context about worship, here's what God said. Listen to Psalm 95 verse number 7. The Bible uh, says this for us. He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Most people recognize that was David who was uh, writing as the agent at that time. And so David wrote those words. But I want you to listen to Hebrews chapter 3 in quoting this passage. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 7 actually comments this way. Therefore, notice this now, don't miss this. As the Holy Spirit says, today, if you'll hear His voice, do not harden your heart. Now wait a minute. David said that long ago, long ago, David was the instrument God used, and yet when the New Testament comments on that, it's the Holy Spirit who says. Let me show you a couple of others. Look at Psalm 45, verse number 6. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and a, scep a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. And so in the long ago, here we have this in the Old Testament, Contemplation of the sons of Korah. Listen now to the Holy Spirit's comment on this. In Hebrews 1 verse 8, the Bible says, But to the Son, God says. Uh, look at another one. Psalm 102 verses 25 and 27. Listen to these words. And this is a psalm of David. The title includes for us, Of old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hand. Verse 20, number 27, But you are the same, and your years will have no end. Now, this psalm is quoted in Hebrews chapter 1, and here's what it says. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth. The heavens are the work of your hand. They'll perish, but you will remain, and they'll all go old like a garment. And so again, this is attributed not to David, but the Lord said, and so what are we trying to illustrate here? Isaiah 7, 14. Isaiah prophesied about the virgin birth. But in Matthew 1, 22 and 23, here's what it says, and this is the idea so succinctly. The Lord spoke by the prophet saying. That's the idea. God may have used Isaiah but the end product was the Lord speaking. Hosea 11.1, 1, Hosea said, Matthew 2.1, the Lord spoke by the prophet. We've got Eliphaz's words recorded in Job 5 verse 13, and yet in 1 Corinthians 3.19, the Bible says that's God's word. You've got David said, in Psalm 41 verse 9, and then in Acts 1 verse 16 where that's quoted, the Holy Spirit, here it is, so beautifully, the Holy Spirit spoke by the mouth of David. God spoke 
by the mouth of David. Acts chapter 4, verse 24 and 25. And so what we're trying to say is that when you look to the Old Testament, when Moses penned things, when David spoke things, when the prophets stood up and God recorded that in the Bible, whose words was that? The Lord spoke by the prophet. The, although God used a human agent, the end result is God's word, not man. Now, let's shift gears a little bit then, and let's think about New Testament and the idea of the Holy Spirit and inspiration there. Friend, Jesus promised His followers that no doubt it would be the work of the Holy Spirit to provide an accurate recounting of the events of His life. We mentioned this earlier, but I want you to look back at John 14, 26. How is it that I can trust the words of the New Testament because the Holy Spirit, not men, accurately recounted the life of Jesus. Look at John 14, and notice what Jesus promised His disciples in John 14, verse number 26. Jesus said, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in My name, watch this, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. When Jesus spoke something, how do I know that, that, that Matthew or Luke or John got it right? Well, I don't have to depend on Matthew, Luke, and John. The Holy Spirit made sure that that is accurately recounted. The Holy Spirit governed the process of inspiration from beginning to end. Remember 2 Timothy 3.16? All Scripture... Genesis to Revelation, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for approval, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly, that is completely equipped for every good work. Now, when Paul said all Scripture, did he have in mind just the Old Testament Scripture? Or did he have a larger group in mind? You see, this is a very important question. If all Scripture also includes the New Testament, then friend, we can see a great lesson being taught there. And in fact, the Apostle Paul had already described a specific New Testament book as Scripture in his first letter to Timothy. 1 Timothy 5, verse 18, Paul will include that as Scripture. Now, the point being, everything, Old and New Testament, that's all Scripture. And so when Paul mentions the Scripture is inspired of God, he's not just talking about the Old Testament. The New Testament was also called Scripture. It is the very Word of Almighty God. Look in 1 Timothy 5, verse 18 with me, and I want you to see a very powerful point about the New Testament being Scripture here. Look in 1 Timothy 5, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse number 18. That's 1 Timothy 5. Look at verse number 18 with me. The Bible says, For the Scripture says, You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his hire. Now you've got two references here. One is an Old Testament reference, and where's the other? You see, the first part of that quote comes from uh, Deuteronomy 25, verse 4, and we recognize and we've seen that that is the, included in the corpus of Scripture. But the second half of that is found in Luke chapter 10, verse 7 only. It is not unusual that in the context of the first century uh, Judaism, an Old Testament was called Scripture in the New Testament. But it's really significant that a New Testament book was also called Scripture so soon after it was written. And so the Holy Spirit not only recognizes, but calls. Luke 10, verse 7, in the New Testament, Scripture as well. In fact, there are several references in the New Testament to New Testament writers claiming inspiration for their writing. That is, these men recognized and acknowledged it was the Holy Spirit who was the driving force behind the New Testament. Listen to these. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 13. Paul said, These things we also speak, 
not in words which human wisdom speaks, but which the Holy Spirit speaks. Did you think about what Paul said there? Paul said, when I speak, it's not human wisdom. It's the Holy Spirit who's speaking. Listen to 1 Corinthians 14, verse number 37. Paul said, you, you want to think you're a spiritual person? Get this first. If anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things I write to you. This is Paul speaking now. The things I write to you, these are the very commands of God. Paul recognized not only what he spoke came from God, what he wrote, the end product was the Word of God. And I want you to notice this passage. Look up with me. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. Would you look at this beautiful idea? 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Notice what the Scripture says. This is such a beautiful passage. 1 Thessalonians 2. Look in verse number 13. The Bible says this. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing. Watch this now. Because when you received the Word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not, listen now, as the Word of men, but as it is in truth, the Word of God, which also effectively works in you. When we think about, when we think about um, the process of inspiration and how marvelous that is, Paul says, here's what is so great about you Thessalonians. When you receive the Word of God from us, you received it as it is in truth, not man's word. It wasn't Paul's opinion. It wasn't John's opinion. It wasn't Luke's opinion. You received it as it is in truth, the Word of God. And so friend, here's what we're trying to drive home today. This book, the Bible teaches, this book that we refer to as the Holy Bible, the Word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, there was a guiding force that made sure that this book is pure and perfect and holy. What is that force? It is the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit oversaw the process of inspiration. When, and here's what I want you to really understand. When Paul picked up his pen, you know, we say, okay, well, how do we know that wasn't just Paul's opinion? Or how do we know that wasn't David's opinion? Or how do we know that wasn't just what somebody somewhere thought? When Paul picked up pen, when Peter stood up in Acts chapter 2 and spoke, when David wrote something down in the Psalms, remember what the Bible will say? The Lord spoke by me. Or the Lord spoke by the prophet. Or sometimes it'll just say, a man may have spoke it and a man may have penned it. But God forgets all that and He says, the Holy Spirit said. Why? Because that's the important part. It's God's Word, not men's. And so here's the practical application of that. Friend, if this book was overseen, guided and superintended the process by the Holy Spirit, you could be sure this is God's Word. And that means for each one of us, three things. I want to love it. I want to give my heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. I want to love God's Word because of its pure, special, unique nature, and mainly because this is God giving me His message today. And so I want to love the Word of God. I want to live it in my life every day. I want to live to the best of my ability to the Word of God. If any man lives a life that's pleasing to God and tries to walk in the light and obey the gospel, we know that person is going to be blessed in the life to come. And then thirdly, not only do I want to love it, not only do I want to live it, I want to let others know about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And friend, that's our hope today. We want to share the power of God's Word. This book has the power to change lives. Romans 1.16 says the gospel, the Holy Spirit's message is the power of God unto salvation. This book can change my life and change yours for good, for eternity. 
so that one day we can live in heaven with God. And so, friend, we want to close by asking this. Are you a member of the Lord's body? Have you obeyed the words of the Bible? Remember, these are the words of eternal life. John chapter 6, verse 63 and verse 68. If you'll receive with meekness the implanted word, the Bible says it'll save your soul. James chapter 1, verse number 21. And so we ask today, have you submitted your life to the will of God? Here's what Jesus said. If you love me, keep my commandments. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? In Acts chapter 8, Philip is in the chariot with the Ethiopian eunuch. And he's traveling down the road. And in the distance, this man's been hearing about Christ and how to become a Christian. In the distance, he sees water and he says, Hey, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? Do you remember the hindrance? Acts chapter 8, verse 34 through 36. If you believe with all your heart, you may. Have you believed in Jesus? Have you turned from a life of sin to God? Acts 3.19, repent and turn again that your sins might be blotted away? Have you made the good confession that the Ethiopian eunuch did? I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. You see, Jesus taught that was essential. Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. And friend, to be saved and to get into God's kingdom, have you been baptized in water? In John chapter 3, verse number 5, Jesus said to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Saul of Tarsus was told in Acts twenty two sixteen, 16, Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord, and then rising up out of that watery grave. We want to walk in newness of life each and every day. And so we hope you'll join us. If you've not obeyed the gospel, we urge you to do that. And we hope you'll join us next time as we study more about the inspiration of God's divine Word. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the